Hey everybody, this is an extra special, extra special stranger of candy. No, uh, mm, that sounds like a porno. Actually, it's an old TV show from the 90s about this 40 year old woman who went back to school. Oh, she went down back to high school. She's like, she's like a junkie whore. I've already done that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, folks, uh, you are watching. Yeah, you are watching and listening and listening hopefully to a decent Matt Free Matt special. It's so special that it probably will sound like shit, but I'm I'm excited about it. That means it makes it special shit. Yeah. And if you didn't notice, I was checking the mics, but we're we're gonna give you guys a little input, a little story into I guess how we came to to liberty, how we came to libertarian movement, or at least like, you know, basic concepts, and the you know it, it'll be weird because because we make it weird. That's we, what yeah, we do, <laughs> piecing things together. And, and my background and my story, it, it's it, it's kind of convoluted, but it's 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 humorous, and I just I wanted to start. Obviously, the non-aggression principle. One of, I obviously, when I, God, it's not even when I, five minutes. When I, when I, obvi, when I obviously know. When you ovulate, what? Ovulate when I release <laughs> eggs. I'm, I'm a. I forgot what those things are. An oviraptor. No, those are the oviraptors. Oviraptors are animal. Were dinosaurs that ate. Velociraptors. Eggs. No, no. Oviraptors were actually a type of dinosaur that. Eight eggs. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, it's, they're probably little claws. Yeah. They did. Uh, they did, but they had like long tongues too, where they could get the, the, almost like sna like a anteater type deal, almost. I mean, you know, um, just performance scrambled. Thank you. Anyway, back back to our subject when we were talking about dinosaurs, not being a dinosaur, but serving. I think my pushing off point to becoming this, you know, libertarian commenting superstar that I am, which is a lot of shit, but guys, I, I, I served in the military doing counter drug operations. And I think I used to crack jokes about it. A lot of people know it was hard for me to do any job too serious when I had an opportunity to, you know, you know, kind of cut jokes about things, but I I, I got mad, and I, I think like the I was dealing with the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard people heard me talk about said, "Hey, would would we be out of a job if they just legalize this shit?" And the the weirdest thing is the one I was like, "Shut up!" Like you're we're gung ho, you know. I was like, "Well, you shut up with that," you know. And like that's the answer to everything. Like soon the military, but. I, I noticed that the vast majority of people that don't have drug problems are, are generally the people who choose not to do drugs. Imagine that concept. And the thing is that I joked with other people. I was like, other people I knew that had been involved with drugs. These are people who clean their lives up and join the military. And I was like, who here would just, you know, and these are people that I, I outranked. I said, look, you, you know, they could, they could talk frankly with me but the weirdest thing is i asked these folks i was like you know who here would just like to see drugs legalized and you know what the weirdest thing was it was like the one guy i know who had like stolen cars and he was like 10 yeah he got arrested stealing cars he was like 10 or 11 and he told me what did he tell me he's like yeah yeah man yeah yeah bro yeah yeah he's like he's colombian you know he's from colombian descent like everybody knows, you know, Colombians and their precious, precious nose candy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, which helps fund the CIA, but we'll not go into that. But I just thought it was hypocritical. You know, we throw people in jail for something. And the weirdest thing is that you can, you take personal responsibility in your life and it probably won't hurt you, you know. <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, we haven't done any editing yet, so you're going to see, you know, raw sneezing. What, we edit? What? On occasion, we do. <gasps> but I thought we did it raw. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll do it live. No. Uh, anyway, folks, the, the whole thing about the personal responsibility is there's a lot of people that felt that way. And we felt like outside of, you know, conspiracy talk about how people always, uh, some of these knuckleheads that talk about the prison industrial complex and things like that. And on its lower, on its lowest basic level, personal responsibility, you know, your good decisions will lead to your success. Your bad decisions, generally speaking, will probably be some of the stuff that screws you over. Like getting drunk and not showing up to work. And we don't ban booze. I mean, we have it one time. And you know what happened? People went nuts. Al, Al freaking Capone is what happened. And uh, Kennedy happened. But Kennedy! Kennedy! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. We had You're a welcome. special moment. Special bonding moment. Thank you. I love you, man. I hate you, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, folks, the, the whole thing is that when I read about, you know, more about personal responsibility and I was upset about conservatives and liberals both about, you know, they're riding the pine when it comes to the, the drug war and tax money being paid for it. And basically all we're doing is just causing the price of drugs to go up. Now, the, the weirdest thing, you know, obviously the supply control there, but... The, the weirdest thing, guys, is I read more about, I was like, well, who likes legalizing drugs? And I read more into it, and, like, people that believe in, I guess, uh, I don't want to say legalization or decriminalization or, you know, a combination of the two, that a lot of people are like, you know, it, it was a Ron Paul quote, I think he was talking to a group of people, and he said, well, who, if I would legalize heroin tomorrow, how many people are going to start shooting up? Kidding crickets? Yeah, and there was, like, nobody there. And he's like, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. And the weird thing is, guys, I just, people that are like, well, how can you be a Christian and not support, support legalize, you know, how can you not support, you know, war on drugs? And I said, guys, we created a black market, but. The whole, th no. the whole thing is your personal responsibility. There's people who they know what it takes to live a decent life. It's like, okay, let's not get knocked up when we're 12. Hmm, you know. Uh, what's another one? Hey, let's not snort coke and let's go to work instead. Like, I know plenty of people have been complete pieces of crap in their life, but they kept their nose, you know, literally kept their nose clean. And they went to work and stayed away from the knuckleheads and the drugs. They didn't go to parties or... I had a buddy who used to go, and I think they went to him and, and him and their you know band of merry pranksters used to go over, and they were the this chick they knew, but it, the dad shows up and he just ends up beating the guy's ass with a baseball bat, and they're all high on cocaine, they get drunk and throw shit off of roofs, they broke into people's homes and stuff. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is, you notice they're not being productive. And they commit property crimes. The whole thing is, it doesn't matter if you're sober, you're drunk, or you're high. If you commit crimes, you know, crime against a person or property, like, you know, the general here, if he goes and just ransacks his place and starts busting windows, the it's crime, tempting. it doesn't matter, I mean, like, if he's sober, okay, if it's, he busts the windows. But it doesn't change all of a sudden because he's high. Or he had a bag of weed in his hand, I mean, in his pocket. I don't, I, he's got to break windows or something, you know. I don't know what I don't know the methods of on how General Flynn would go and like just wail away and hit a bunch of you know windows or what have you. But anyway, uh, folks, the the whole thing is that I started going further into it, and I read like party planks and platforms and statements from people that leaned libertarian and you know the, the Paul. You can call them the Paulites, but Ron Paul's people, you know, uh, you know, before Johnson showed up, you had all sorts of strange, uh, 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 you know, like you had, you know, of course you had Barr, but you had, there were, there were people I remember back and, you know, there were some college students that used to, you know, r do a little bit of campaigning for, you know, libertarian type people and, and just 
it was a giant rabbit hole. There was a giant, you know, there's different, I guess, different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Different avenues and different, like, you know, pathways. Path, yeah. Like um, the, the, the Mises Institute, or you have the, uh, even though alternatives or yeah and you have uh, left-leaning libertarians the conklinites you have the you, you obviously have the paulites you have some uh you have some people that lean for the the paleo cons even though oh nothing to do with the paleo cons but the fuck's a paleo paleo con um uh goldwater type people for the gold. barry goldwater the, mm, cricket it's you know 60s 70s uh, gold oh, water. Oh no wonder. I'm t- but it's it's the paleo. The only thing I know about 60s and 70s is muscle cars and Black Sabbath. And well, Kiss. The thing about paleo cons is it's, it's it was like you know predecessor. A lot of those people held a lot of the same system of beliefs as you know modern libertarians. But okay. Okay. It's sort of a pre- predecessor before the actual label. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the thing is that you know Goldwater went bupkis, but. The, the weirdest thing is that a lot of people don't, it, it's a process and, and there's trial and error and stuff, and I read a lot of books and I got further into it and I said, you know, I don't like when people put labels on me, I don't like the bipolar nature of voting, and I honestly believe that, you know, there should be a top seven, it should be like a, a, a top seven in the, uh, libertarians have at their at their um, convention, I, I don't know if you knew this, but they do round voting. So yeah. There were seven, seven candidates. Yeah, we use the the T Rex example was what you used last time. They had like seven candidates, and they do a round round mm-hmm. one of voting, and then whoever got the least vote basically was chomped out and gone. And then they do another round of voting, and whoever ended up the least of that, and it would just whittle down until you eventually got your candidate. And the analogy used was it was the T-Rex going around the track, and after <laughs> each lap, the T-Rex would chomp and we got your face. have one one less, you know, object in the rearview mirror is closer than it appears. It's Jurassic Park. Ah, oh, he gets it. He gets it. <laughs> it's either that or Ace Ventura, but um, no, it's Jurassic Park. Yeah, assholes are closer than they appear, and you're like, guy hit the mirror. Oh yeah. It's alive! <laughs> yeah, that that was the uh, he got in the the dog was going out to the car. It's flooded a little bit. We'll just give it a minute, <gasps> or we could try it now. And it floods and doesn't stop. Warning: assholes are closer than they appear. <laughs> Why don't you give it a shot while you're back there? All righty then. Sorry, no, I no. could like quote that fucking movie. No, it, it's it's all good. It's just. Looking looking back at it, it it the 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 whole thing is that the the it, I'm not saying it's solutions or anything, but you know you try the same thing over and over, and you're like you have A and B, and like A sucks, so let's try B. B sucks, let's try A. And they're like people are si- people have like no sight. I was like guys, it's 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 you know it's not we're not bipolar. You know they're like. But we can't if we if we try something else. It's the team sport mentality. It's the team what we call the team sport mentality. Look, Auburn and Alabama both have football teams, but a lot of people don't know there is Missouri and Vanderbilt and St. Mary's College and even in Canada, you know, Canadians have football. They're like, but it's not the same. It's not Alabama. And I said, guys, it's. Why have that attitude? You know, I said that guys, it's your what you really believe in might be, you know, something outside of this bipolar system. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, a personal responsibility, freedom, the non-aggression principle, and it's stuff that I look into. It's stuff that I was like, look, I, I'm just my interactions with people. I want them to be. Uh, I want to engage with other people if if they choose to, and if they don't choose to, or I don't choose to, we won't do it. And I know people don't. They're like, "Oh, that never happens." I was like, "We, we, we kidnap people for military drafts. We kidnap people for uh, if you don't go to jury duty, like you have to go to jury duty. 
And the weird thing is, if you don't, like, show up because they gave you a summons, mm -hmm. they'll actually, in most places, will send somebody to arrest you. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. I choose not to be. I mean, you're like, I, I, I can be imprisoned or an involuntary servitude being a juror. <laughs> and I'm like, there's people that are functional retards. You probably don't want them to be jurist. Like, jurors. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not a joke against anybody. It, it's anyway, folks. Um, let's ask. Let's ask. Uh, uh, El General. El General. From a uh, fighting. <laughs> oh, don't get me started. See your dad. Said fighting from the main streets of San Pedro Sula. <laughs> El General Patricio. Flynn. Hola, hola. <laughs> All right. Well, first off, you mentioned fighting, and I got to say, on a, on a fight note, the Fury Wilder fight, a uh, really good fight. I just don't see how Fury did not get the W in that, because even if you count the fact that, yes, Wilder did knock him down, and that second knockdown, I thought Wilder, like, knocked uh, Fury out. I thought it, but he kind of pulled the Undertaker and got up at the last minute. But even if you factor in those two knockdowns, I still had Wilder only winning three rounds. And then, but that's a whole separate issue, but I just had to give my comments. I think Fury won the fight. Um, I'm hoping there's a rematch, and the rematch is probably going to be harder for Fury because he's got less to work on. And Wilder's probably going to look a lot better in that uh, second fight because he's going to know what to expect. So we'll see how that goes. Segue into moi. Now, for me, honestly, I know um, our, uh, my esteemed colleague here dove right into the, the political aspect of it. But for me, it's really got nothing to do with any of the platforms or anything else like that. Um, I've got to kind of give you my personal backstory and leave the politics out of it just to and kind of bring that back around. Um, I basically... I've got cerebral palsy, and I do a bunch of things that people think I shouldn't be able to do. I've always, my mission statement in life has always been two words, fuck can't. I've been told I wouldn't walk, I've been told I wouldn't do this or that or the other, and no matter whether it was a doctor or whoever else, I've done it. I currently um, do jujitsu at 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu in Decatur. I've also done Goshen Jiu-Jitsu and basically been a martial artist for about 10, 15 years. Uh, I just started uh, doing barbell powerlifting movements probably six to eight weeks ago. And side note, screw the machines, hit the barbells. Um, just always try to do things and get put myself in a uncomfortable zone to grow and to find ways to absolutely fuck can't and i just take that concept into just about every aspect of my life and i i look at the way things are and you like uh, my buddy here was talking about said it's bipolar you're one way or the other and over time i just got tired of it looking for different avenues and different ways and i started listening to different podcasts um Everybody talks about Ron Paul, but my actual first introduction to the concepts of liberty was um, Jesse Ventura. And it was after uh, Ron Paul ran for um, president the first time. It was like back in er, like 2015, the last election when he ran. Because I, I had no idea who the guy was. I feel like I owe an American ap apology because... I didn't vote for Ron Paul then because I didn't know who he was. And I first heard these concepts of, of liberty and with uh, Jesse Ventura through his podcast, he had on podcast one. Um, and then from there, I branched off and found, um, oh, Spangle, Chris Spangle. What is this? We are libertarians. And that's kind of where I first really did some shallow tiptoeing into the because they, they've started mentioning the non-aggression principle and things of that, that nature. It kind of made my spotty senses tingle. I was like, this is interesting. Then I um, 
Jason Stapleton did an advertisement on We Are Libertarian, so I jumped over to his podcast just to see a different point of view. And that pretty much dropped a political nuclear bomb and kind of to the point where I can't say I'm a card-carrying member of the Libertarian Party, but I am definitely a uh, Libertarian-minded independent. And the reason I chose to do that was because these concepts, people think you can't do anything with them, and you, they're, they're, they're not going to go anywhere. They're just ideas, and they're going to stay in the idea tank. Well, again, going back to my uh, mission statement of fuck can't, let's find ways to make this happen. Find ways to put people in office, things of that nature. Make it slowly grow to where, oh, yes, we do have an op other options, and it's not so bipolar. That's pretty much it for me. It's like I said, it was kind of a roundabout way. It's it's not directly political. It just one thing an aspect in my life. I carried it over into as many other aspects as possible, and it just led me to it. It, I I don't I don't speak for the Eliezerado when I say this, but I think it was kind of a, 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 of an ingrained ingrained nature of mine that. I was curious, and I and I see people uh, taking, you know, weaseling their way out of thinking and, and, and putting any effort into their lives. And I look and I see there's some people in New Hampshire, there's people, uh, there's some brothers in Wyoming and, and, and other outfits where people actually live 24-7, and they don't believe in paying tax money to do what you should be doing mm -hmm. and it's kind of people think of that if you think about medical care now you know, especially now I try not to <laughs> well but the government gets their hands on things and it, it doesn't exactly work the greatest when they do it and that's one way of putting it insurance uh, or I told you guys about the mandatory insurance laws uh, mentioned before about uh, uh, Social Security I call that old folks retirement the worst damn retirement program in the world. As much as people want to scream Ponzi scheme, which Ponzi scheme? Ponzi! Hey, the Pons. <laughs> which is funny, I think, like, Ponzi had little to nothing to do with the Social Security, but anyway. <laughs> hey. Like, <laughs> it's like, how cheesy can we look? No For real. <laughs> but I need, I need to go get my jacket and flip the collar up. Hey, jump on the shark, baby, jump on the shark. Anyway, the 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 whole thing is all these programs, and I was like, somebody could could start a business and handle it, but no, the government just tells you how to basically take money from you. Mm -hmm. You work, they take money from you. You can't opt out of it. You're like, you will take this program. Mm -hmm. It's weird because you don't even have to file. Like if you get old in your retirement age, you don't have to file to get your own money. You just won't get it. <laughs> yeah. Which is weird because they're like, they'll take the money from him. I'm like, what if I don't want to get the money? Will they just not take it from me when I'm 14? No. I'm going to take it anyway. I'm going to take it anyway. Like, well, you don't have to file. Like, why don't they just give me the money? Who oh, you just want the money? That was so Samuel L. Jackson, by the way. We just want the money. Which movie? Uh, Deepwater Rising or something like that? Oh, uh, yeah, a Christian Slater movie. Yeah, uh, deep, uh, deep, Hard Rain. Hard Rain. Hard Rain. Yeah, yeah that, was a, that was a 90s. We just want the money. Are you sure it was Sam Jackson or was it um, Morgan Freeman? Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Yes, yeah, Morgan Freeman. Get busy, Logan. Get busy, Don. Damn right. <laughs> With a voice like this. <laughs> Go ahead and stamp your paper, Sonny. Morgan Freeman. Frankly, no, I don't give a damn. Paroled. <laughs> get this asshole out of here. <laughs> what does it take to get on a parole board? They're like, no libertarians on parole boards. Like, this is injustice. They're like. This guy stabbed like 30 people. Injustice for all. <laughs> but the weirdest, the thing about our prison system is that the government or governmental entity determines, you know, what's supposed to make something right. 
Now, like, I go and I kill the general's mother. I'm not saying I will, but just for example. The, the strange thing is that they determine, what well, you know, I'm supposed to go to jail and there's some court costs, but they don't. They don't, you know, I'm not allowed to make right what I have done. You know, slights or injustices I've actually committed against a person or property, which would be, you know, the general's mother. And jo- mom's jokes aside, <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's it's weird, guys. It's mom's jokes aside. The whole thing is like I can't believe this. You know, I said why? I was like, can we? You'll see somebody. They're like, oh, justice has been done. But I'm like, their family's incomplete. Their family, like this person's labor, and their and their love. There's no way nobody's ever tried to make things right. Court system, like we're gonna throw this bastard in jail. And the funny thing is, I'm the one that ends up paying for this asshole to live the rest of his life in jail. It's not like he's paying for it. And we're like, and it's funny, he didn't make anybody whole. He didn't make the situation whole. He didn't, they didn't even let him offer. I guarantee you, in that situation, they wouldn't even let me offer. And I'm like, you know, hey, I want to make, I want to make this right. I, I monumentally screwed up. You know, it's not that I'm, you know, it's just like, you, you know, you obviously murder and manslaughter and things like that. And like, my awful driving skills and my neuroses behind the wheel have taken you know the general's mother and this world is you know in her community is less they they're at a loss like i'm not allowed to make these people whole they they have a they probably could have a complaint and say you know we're missing this we're missing this we're missing this mm-hmm. and i'm not allowed to make it whole i'm like i have I have been determined, jury my peers determined I have wronged, you know, the community of, you know, BFE mm-hmm. and, you know, the Flynn's or, you know, whoever, whoever the other family members are, but I'm not allowed to make, make them whole. I'm like, hey, can, maybe we can come to consensus. Maybe mm-hmm. I could, you know, I screwed up. Can I, can we, I have wronged you. What could I do to, to make this whole? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not saying, you know, $300 would do it, but right, you know, right. like, or like a payment plan for 20 years, you know, I'm like a mortgage, a mortgage on my, on my labor and my brow. Now, if you're a non-worker, I'm like, it's like you could have him hauling rocks around or something. Mm-hmm. Like he can go and like sell his labor to somebody else. Like make him go work. You gotta do something. We don't even need dump trucks anymore. We just have like idiots carrying you know, buckets of rocks running around, like, keep it going. <laughs> it was like, got, got it for another five years, read construction, you know, probably going to get in trouble with that one, but read construction. <laughs> We're like, yeah, uh, that guy owes me like $300,000. He like burnt my house down. Instead of putting him in a prison, I want, I want to, I want, it would make me whole. I was like, uh, maybe we can work something out. Like you can have his labor for you know 30 years. Like, keep all them buckets, man. They're like, you know, it's cheaper just to buy buy a dump truck. Like, nah, take these idiots for another round. <laughs> Especially with, like a guy with no arms. Primate moment. <laughs> lice, don't with me. Time out for lice. <laughs> <laughs> like, hmm, nice. Thanks, man. Not quite that, but it just <laughs> bugged me. <laughs> bugged me. Anyway, folks, uh, without being a primate, but the the thing is that so many things in your life, so many things that personal responsibility, and yes, I yeah, I can swing this over to to other brothers of the FOE, but personal F-O-E. fraternity of excellence. Ah. The thing is, manning up is living your own life manning up is responsibility for action and inaction and the whole thing is you you live a life you live a successful life when you're living 24 7. it's not very you know mantastic when when somebody else is calling the shots like social security some some assholes i don't care to deal with you could even take that concept to your everyday job though you know 
from being a worker to owning your own business. Now, it yes, mean, yes. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a product, but you could but have information that's valuable I've, or whatnot. With my employer, I've, I've agreed on on certain conditions and trade my labor. You know, hand, yeah, yeah. I mean, handshake, I've traded. But Social Security, I've never right. signed anything saying I wanted to do that. It's just automatically deducted. Right, I get you. It's, it's my money now. Mm-hmm. You know, just imagine some guy find out you're working and he runs over and decks you and, and just counted out some money, put the rest in your pocket and walks off. Not only was it one of the Social Security people, there was a, a like Medicaid and Medicare. Yeah. What about the children? And I'm well, like, I'll take care of my I, damn kids. And, and I also think there is a lot of like unintended consequences with this stuff too. You know, it's like they'll do they do this one thing to do this, but it causes so many other problems. And I think honestly, it's part of the reason why you don't you don't see as much charity as you do is because pe- people are like, well, they're already taking this out. And they've got it. We, we, there's government supposed to take care of it. Why should we? I mean, I got punched what five times last week. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but the but the money back, I'm just like, damn, pockets are getting light. Yeah. Just, they don't even look. They don't even punch you to take the money. That would actually keep it interesting. Like a like highway robbery, like make everybody cash their checks, and that's for it's the government. And they have like contractors, like taking money at knife point. Yeah. Look, this is for Social Security. Like or, some Scott Atkins type motherfucker <laughs> in the movies. Cough it up. Cough it up. Whoa, what is it this time? It's Medicare, asshole. Cough it up. What? You don't know, look. I'm here. I'm here to t- for medical care for kids, asshole. You know, oh. like, and they have an I have an attitude. Like I could, I could like be like I could a, be in a movie like, like a governmental Ray Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, cough it up, you bastard. The bag or the bat. <laughs> the bag or the bat. <laughs> it's like, damn, you guys keep working me over on my independent contract. Don't give a shit. I got old folks to take care of. Like, I ought to be like an extra in like a movie. Like, I should like, we should make, you know, our beefs with government. We ought to have like a movie mm-hmm. that acts it out. We ought to just have like, that would be funny. Like four different people, like yeah, I got a, pay, I got a payday. A fourteen-year-old kid ends up paying for Social Security. <laughs> look, look, Scotty. Look, I only made seven dollars an hour. Look, Scotty. You're gonna need. You're gonna need retirement. Why can't I buy my own retirement? You know, just nail. Them. <laughs> Give me that money. You know, count it out. Put the rest of his pocket. It was like when I was in when I was in boot camp. To tell you the, the funny thing. And let it be played by uh, uh, Michael J. White doing his Black Dynamite. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Black Dynamite. Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's bad. Uh, anyway, folks, the whole, the whole thing is somebody, you know, you can live your own life. And I was like, what kind of man are you when you're it's just like, well, somebody ought to do something. No, maybe you should. I honestly, one of the smartest things that I heard and I, I can't quote the person directly, and, and you know, hopefully they'll get on the comments and say something. But they they did mention there were we like have people that comment us. One, <gasps> bless you, sir. <laughs> we had like one. It was like our one guy. <laughs> but anyway, folks, the whole thing is that people like we're men find solutions. Men don't, you know, it's like. Interactions, there's there's problems, there's opportunities to make money. Look, it isn't an opportunity to cry to the government. It's not an opportunity people just blindly, like, well, there ought to be a program. And I'm like, no, there should not be a program. You honestly should get off your ass and do something. Hire your own firefighters. Like, what, nobody does that. That's stupid. No, because you're not doing it. You're the idiot who... Demands the local government does all this crap for you. And I'm like, garbage pickup? And they're like, at one time, private entities would do that. And there were private dumps. I'm not saying now there are, but... You there know, were. Like an incinerator, an energy company that would buy your trash. 
-hmm. One day I'm going to live in a world like that. They're like, they're going to buy trash from you. Like if people were competing and, and they did exactly that, I guarantee you somebody would be like, they're like, well, if you leave out, you leave your trash out, like, and then we'll get your whole neighborhood and we'll pay you five cents. <laughs> You're like, hey man, that's nice. They're like, this is a lot better than the Soviet style trash pickup we've had before. Mm-hmm. When the rednecks that used to go and destroy my trash cans. Or even if it was like five bucks. Like we will pick up your trash for five bucks. And like somebody else is like like actually undercutting them in like non profit trash service. Mm-hmm. Like seven dollars. It's like, you know, Flynn's libertarian trash pickup. <laughs> Fleet. Fleet. <laughs> Flynn's Libertarian Trash Pickup. Fleet P. Or whatever. Flip. Or Fleep. 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 Not Felipe, but Fleep. Felipe, my, my Honduran lover. <laughs> she at. There's no Felipe. They're all named Kevin. <laughs> no. Have you ever watched the news? Like, half the people, they're like... Uh, they're named Eva Lavia. <laughs> uh, Manny Soul is coming over the border with her kids. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin and Dave <laughs> and they're like they're just little mestizo looking guys and they're like Kevin Dave <laughs> I was like I'm going to start naming my kids Juan Pablo <laughs> this is Juan Pablo and Juan Valdez <laughs> fighting out of Sun <laughs> <laughs> which is said there was a guy in MMA and he was fighting out of San Pedro formerly out of San Pedro Sula when he moved to the United States, and I was like, dope. Sweet. Oh, man, anyway. I haven't been there in like ten, over 10 years. I ought to go down there. And as much as I wanted to try to be funny and say, I'm going to go down there and straighten things up. No, they don't need my help. I'll straighten up their own. Because they're, they're loving people. And they love they love their country. They love their people. As much as I want to gag and joke about Hondurans, because well, somebody's got to get punched around by Puerto Ricans. No, I'm just kidding. Well, the way I look at it, you know, it, it, it's I, I feel slightly offended because I cannot find a proper racial slur for Honduran. And I'm half Honduran. I'm looking for my own racial slur to find it, and I can't find the proper Honduran racial slur. And it kind of offends me because it's like, do, do you not about, hate me enough to have your own racial slur? I don't if, get it. If you, if you know of any racial slurs for Hondurans, you are more than welcome to put them in the comments, or send, or even send heat, hate mail. If you're Puerto Rican or Honduran, free mat podcast at gmail.com. Free rum is acceptable as well. Free mat podcast at gmail.com, and that's Matt M A T T for a double dose of pimping. Ha <laughs> ha! No, Big uh, pimp and spend and cheap. Medium pimping. Medium pimping. Yeah. Okay. It's like pocket pocket change. As long as they ain't a pocket pussy. <laughs> it's, it's not valet service. It's, it's like, yeah, I parked down the block, so I don't have to pay for valet. <laughs> Medium pimping. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah. I was like, I'm, hopefully they don't see me walk in. I'll just say I took a limo. <laughs> <laughs> Medium pimping. Like, I got a coupon. <laughs> Medium pimping. Damn. But you never try to go to the, uh, you never try to go to a massage parlor and ask if they had coupon night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh shit! Son. So if we had more, if we had, if the government didn't get in the way of, you know, of honest businesses like brothels and and massage parlors, so the price the price would drop these days. And they'd be, would, and they'd they, be having rebates on... And, on I, and I firmly think people would be less frustrated. They'd have a rebate. I guarantee they'd have, like, rebates. A master rebate? Nice. <laughs> I mean, like, gun companies, like Remington stuff, which... Their guns suck anyway. I'm sorry. I'm, I wonder how... They get sued. I'm curious about their 1911, though. But I'm, a, I'm a prone to 1911s. Aim anyway. high, Willis. Aim high. But anyway... Um, Outside of that bad reference there, the 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 whole thing is that yeah, brothels is government gets in the way. I guarantee you, there's a demand for something, there's a market or a black market for it. But 
Uh, did you have any clones? Well, in? There's a there's a black market for it because there's no market. If you actually made a, a legal market for it, it would get rid of almost all of the black market. That was pretty much my closing <laughs> thought. Hey, motions for <laughs> Gotta use the bird. Gotta use the bird. All right, folks. This hopefully vocal, vocal piece of uh, libertarian uh, detritus, I guess. But uh, tell us how you like it. Leave comments. Send hate mail to freematpodcast at gmail.com. Freematpodcast at gmail.com. That's Matt with two T's for a double dose of pimpin. You can tell us how you like it, but we're going to tell you where you're going to get it. Tell you where to shove it. Um, <laughs> Anyway, folks, thank you for stopping by. Look forward to uh, closing words of peace. Obviously, as always, love one another. Feel free to help others, even when it doesn't benefit you. It says, I always believe in the cosmic juju, the spirit of things. But, juju, 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 juju. But anyway, please take care of yourselves.